Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm going to be asking the question whether the AMX M454 is still the best tier 10 heavy tank in the game and considering how meta heavy vehicles are, there's an argument that outside of reward vehicles such as the 279E and the Chieftain, up until the most recent patch this was the best tank in the game. AMX M454s were filling the matchmaker. They were averaging about 53% win ratio, where the next closest heavy, the Super Conqueror, was barely above 50%. There were so many of them in all of the competitive game modes that people were starting to question why would you truly want to play anything else outside of, I guess, grinding field mods once you've already achieved the rank that you want. In the first game that you're going to see today, you will see the AMX M454 in its unnerfed state, with the 130mm being as powerful as it was, at least in the, in the previous patch. Now the difference is, between the previous patch of the M454 and the current patch of the M454 are substantial with regards to the 130mm calibre gun. The damage per minute was 2,507, Wargaming nerfed that down to 2,400. The vehicle also had better aim time at 2.2 seconds compared to 2.5 seconds now. The accuracy was a legendary 0.33, which was crazy for a gun that has 560 alpha damage. And the gun handling was also 33% better, well actually I should say 25% better than it currently is now, as they added on 33% dispersion to when the vehicle is moving and when it's turning, and they also added 40% dispersion to the vehicle's turret traverse. So previously on this tank, you wouldn't even dream of using something like vertical stabilizers because of the great aim time, because of the great gun handling, because of that great accuracy which freed up an equipment slot for the AMX M454. So a lot of people were using something like Gun Rammer, Durability and Turbo on this tank. Personally in this battle I'm using Vents instead to be able to just gain a little bit of everything to the, the holistic nature of the vehicle. And view range, the 3% on this map can be very useful with Vents. However, I do have a second build on this vehicle where I think I drop the vents to be able to use a durability device instead, and that's for when you're playing on those city maps where you can't afford to have your tracks locked down, and maybe that extra 10% hit points can really pay off in those close battles later on in the game. So we're playing on Prokhorovka here, a map which a vehicle like this should be fairly uncomfortable, but when you've got legendary sniping capabilities with this 130mm, uh, yeah, it definitely doesn't feel too painful indeed. This thing was just such an incredible dominant force to the point of it being possibly one of the most toxic vehicles in the game. When I think about it, there haven't really been too many more tech toxic tech tree tanks over the years. Let me think about uh, a history of World of Tanks and which ones really stood out to me. Well, I think one of the first, should we say, of the truly overpowered tech tree tanks for a while was the T-57 Heavy. It went into the game actually kind of better than it is now with a better reload and the vehicle was just running around and really tearing up the game when it was first introduced. I guess probably in 2013 or 2014, around about that kind of area. I believe the vehicle went in after the British tanks. And the, the T-57 Heavy was just an utter monster. Wargaming nerfed that vehicle very quickly indeed. They also did things like nerf the gold rounds on the T-69 because that thing was considered to be outrageous as well. Look at this armor on this vehicle. You've got the gun, you've got the mobility, you've got at least the frontal armor, because the side profile in this vehicle, yeah, it's never good. It's actually awful. And even heat rounds, uh, if you angle slightly too much, can manage to go through the side of this tank, because it's not all of that thick. It does have two weak points on top, and if people load gold, they can shoot directly at your mantlet just underneath it as well, to the left or to the right. Actually, when I say underneath it, I'm, what I should say, let me clarify, it's just to the left or to the right of the gun shield, but you're pretty much going to have to just fire gold to be able to get through that part. It's the Super Conqueror where you actually have to fire under the mantlet, again, load gold. Hmm. Yeah, a little bit of a, um, a coincidence there that the solution to going through the, the heavy tanks is just to load gold rounds. But let me go back to kind of like my, my history of thinking about the most overpowered tanks ever in World of Tanks. There was a patch where the T-125, the Wargaming buffed the weak point of it to a point where you needed gold and you needed luck with gold to be able to go through. And that made the T-125 for a while the best all-round tank inside the game. That was a terrifying patch before Wargaming nerfed the weak point once again. It's, ki it's kind of interesting that Wargaming have done that with so many heavy tanks over the years now when I think about it, that 
In the, in the case of the T125, and almost identical in the M454, that they buffed the tank, it was clearly too much. The whole of the player base jump on the bandwagon, the tank becomes toxic, filling the matchmaking, meaning that you don't really want to play anything else, and then Wargaming notice this, and they decide to nerf the vehicle back down. Now the T125 uh, hasn't really received too much love since then, but I think considering the, the field mods and the equipment 2.0, the vehicle's not in the worst state. It's just high DPM, and as I show with my masterclass in the T125, it's just about accepting that you have those weak points and just trying to play through it anyway. Another vehicle I can think that was possibly one of the most overpowered of all time was the Object 268 version 4. And it took Wargaming a substantial amount of time to actually nerf the Object 268 version 4. That thing was bombing it around, tearing it up, and because it was this blur of the line between a tank destroyer and a heavy tank, uh, yeah, that thing was truly instrumental. Now I'm going to make a big, bold play here to try and snowball this game. I'm going to drive out in front of these tanks. I get lucky that I bounce the IS-7. Unfortunately, I take a shot from the M454. But I want to do this because I thought that if I made my way along this 7 line and I get to the A1 area, it could be absolutely gigantic gigantic for me and at this stage I'm trying to put together big combined games to try and get closer towards a third mark on this vehicle. A lot of people, myself included, were kind of padding with the M454 when Wargaming gave us a heads up that it would be nerfed in a month or two. And whenever that happens, all of the meta slaves, I was included than myself, jump on the bandwagon and try and get as high stats in an overpowered vehicle before it is inevitably going to be nerfed. And if the developer of a game announces that they're going to nerf something very soon, then, yeah, it's, it should be no surprise that if the developers are admitting that it's overpowered, that it clearly is. So the M454 in this scenario, I'm up to 7,000 combined. Finish off the E75. And do you just see that gun handling? No vert stabs. We have to stop for just a moment to be able to get a shot onto the German heavy tank there. Unfortunately, we're unable to get the uh, extra shell into the IS-7 there. But what I want to do now is really snowball this game. 7,000 is pretty good for a heavy tank. But should we just risk it for the biscuit here? All right, well, we spot an uh, WTR Panzer IV. We spot an Object 705. And just like that, our 7,000 combined game is now up to a 9,000 combined game. We don't quite manage to hit the 705. We ricochet the 140 there. And wow, now we're very... They were only just shy of having 10,000 combined, so it really shows you that in these kind of battles, if you're trying to farm up your marks of excellence, or maybe you're just trying to go for an ace tanker, or just be able to have big boy games with regards to your combines, then it's worth sometimes taking the risks. And that risky play that I made across the middle, maybe about one in two times it would end up in my demise, and then quite often there would have been a tank destroyer that maybe was sitting in the A6 area that might have been able to hit me when I was making my way towards them. But it's calculated aggression and calculated risks, and hopefully they pay off. And when you've got a vehicle that was as outrageous as this tank was in the previous patch, then, you know, you should go for it, right? Managed to get forwards now, slap 600 damage casually into the FV215B183. And with a gun ram and vents on this tank, it's not going to be long before we're going again. Kind of worried about this 140. Don't have to worry about them for much longer. We're still spotting this FV215B183 in this scenario. And just like that, with a kill on the FV at the end of the game, we end up with a little bit of spotting that we didn't see. Up to 12,000 combined and five kills in the M454 in its unnerfed state. Now, interestingly enough, with Wargaming's nerfs, they only targeted this, the 130mm. However, it's not the only gun that you can use on the tank. And so now you see me playing in the current patch on my Plays for Free account. So unfortunately, I'm not using a premium consumable or any premium consumables here. But I'm using a different gun. You can notice the muzzle flare at the end indicating that this is 120mm and not the 130mm. And interestingly enough, Wargaming only nerfed the 130mm on the M454. And so for me, I'm actually preferring the 120mm on this tank. They now have the same damage per minute, whereas previously the 130 had the higher damage per minute. This gun, however, on its standard rounds has 270 millimeters of penetration, meaning that if you don't like to spam gold, and uh, when I'm playing on my Plays for Free account, that is definitely me, 
then this might be the gun for you. 270 millimeters of penetration gives it one of the best penetrations, I think, on any heavy tank in the game. And it is more than enough to butcher the way through quite a lot of plates that otherwise you would need gold in. So I'm asking my friend to give me a little bit of assistance here, but in retrospect, maybe if he just hadn't shot him, I would have ended up getting more ramming damage there. As we crush the Kunza Panzer, showing him that this is indeed a heavy tank and that he is a medium. I do 769 ramming damage to the Kunza Panzer there, with also a little bit of tracking assistance against the STB-1. And one of the things that we can now do, having taken the dip, is grind out all of our opponents here. And as we're going to see in this game, it's a blooming good thing that we were so aggressive. So I shoot the track of the Kranvang, he uses his repair kit, and I tell, Tree Kim! But unfortunately I don't type very well. But look at this rate of fire, it's not bad. And it's arguable that the 120 in that situation alone would have actually done better than the bigger alpha damage gun. So I'm deciding that I want to go in once again. I'm hoping that my team are going to come with me. I actually missed the ram on the standard B, which leaves him on one hit point, which is rather lame. And I'm going to go for the tracking on the STB-1. Now, I didn't quite manage to ram the Type 61 there, but I'm going to continue tracking the Japanese medium tank in this scenario, while also making my way towards the Kranvang. Now, a bit of a weird thing is going to go on here. The Kranvang was just set on fire. He's going to raise his gun. I'm actually going to miss his tank with a bit of bad aim there. And I'm thinking, like, surely someone's going to finish him off right. And he's left very awkwardly uh, saluting for a little bit longer than I think that he possibly wanted. But just like that, we're up to 5,000 combined in the first two and a half minutes of this game. And wow, this gun, it still snaps, right? And that's because while the 130 millimeter on this tank has had nerfed accuracy to 0.36, the 120 millimeter still has that same 0.33 accuracy. And it also has better turret traverse dispersion than the 130mm had before the nerf. And so accordingly, I, st I still don't need to use vertical stabilizers on this tank. Now I would recommend to have smooth ride because the dispersion when moving is the same as the nerf version of the 130. But considering that the dispersion on the 120 is 0 0.08 when turning the turret compared to the 0.14 on the now nerfed 130 gun, this thing now has by far the better gun handling and 0 0.03 better accuracy as well, which allows you to be oh so much more consistent. So what are the downsides to this gun? Well, it surely isn't the premium penetration, because the premium pen is 315 APCR with 1240 shell velocity, whereas the 130mm calibre gun, it fires AP, which gives it two extra degrees of normalisation, but I believe the pen is about 290 or so. And so these APCR rounds are probably going to end up better, all in all, than the gold rounds on the 130mm. So in every single way, including the aim time, which is 1.8, which is 0.7 seconds better than the 130mm, and it's now 0.8 seconds better than the nerfed 130mm in the current patch, the list really goes on as to why this would be the better gun to use. However, there is one thing that this tank or this gun definitely suffers for. And number one, that would be that you can't overmatch 40 millimeter plates. There are so many plates in the game that are 40 millimeters thick. So many roof decks, so many engine decks, so many sides of tanks. For example, the T100LT. It has a 40 millimeter side armor. And so that means that with the, hundred, uh, with the 130 millimeter on this tank, you could overmatch the T100LT. Whereas with the 120mm, you cannot overmatch. And I nearly have an absolute disaster here, boys and girls. I semi-crash into that building and the Panzer nearly manages to get the shell at me. This game could have been very different if that was the case. Because while we're up now by 4,000 hit points, we're only up by two kills. Well, luckily for me, the Panzer 100 is going to have to try and storm me here. But I'm in the awkward scenario of having a Conqueror nailing me. Now, luckily, I have the better rate of fire than the Conqueror, so I should be able to track the Panzer 100. And I want to keep him tracked, and I guess this is the downside to this gun, is that because I've got the better rate of fire but the lower alpha damage, I kind of have to expose the side of my turret more towards his Conqueror. And it's almost like he's pretending to not be interested in me, but as soon as I turn towards the Jagdpanzer 100 to finish him off, he puts his third shell in a row in. I was disappointed about that, but obviously it's, it's important that I get farming and then I get those shots in. And it looks like I was firing regular rounds there at the Jagdpanzer 100 unless I just started to reload AP. But again, with 270, it's more than enough in this situation. So, unfortunately, 
My weak point on top of the tank rears its ugly head. Or maybe he just went straight through my mantlet there. One of the two. We're up to 10,000 combined. Just shy of 10,000 combined so far. But oh, there's a T-57 Heavy who's firing heat, as we can see, with the shell hitting the ground and setting up a little bit of a volcanic eruption there. Now, of course, in World of Tanks, alpha damage is king. I've been finding that recently on the E50, for example, on my Plays for Free account. I've been using the 88mm that I have from the Panther 2, and while it's not the worst gun I've ever used, it just doesn't feel nearly the same as the 105. And I know that having, in that case, the extra 110 alpha damage will really help my gameplay. So there's also no doubt that having 160 alpha damage on this tank will be massive as well. However, considering that the 130 has now been significantly nerfed, I think this 120 is an, an option for you. And if you can make the higher rate of fire work, and you can get around the alpha damage, and you can get around the fact that you can't overmatch 40mm plates anymore, then this gun just has so many advantages in so many areas that maybe it'll be the one for you. So T57 Heavy bounces one, I turn my armor in, he whiffs the second and he decides to fire one at the Char Future 4 instead, which is going to allow me to finish him off and secure about an 11,000 game here that we saw and six kills as well. And oh boy, that is a big game of World of Tanks, irrelevant of what account I was playing on. I was absolutely chuffed with this round. So two big boy rounds here, both times getting a steel wall, doing 6,000 assistance and 6,000 damage in the first game with enough damage to get myself killed at least one time over. 1,490 base experience. The second game, 8,500 damage with 2,500 assistance, making this 11,000 combined with 1,632 base, which is gigantic for a tier 10 tank. With again, blocking nearly as much to be able to get rid of this vehicle, even with the nerfed gun. And we make a very healthy profit with or without a premium account there. Really showing the advantage of how far you can go with the 120mm with its fabulous 270mm of pen on your Plays for Free account. And so to answer the topic at hand, is the AMX M454 still the best heavy tank inside the game? Well, when we take a look at how it's been performing over the last 30 days with regards to its win ratio, it's actually dropped down below the Conqueror, both with regards to how many kills it's getting per game how much damage it's been doing per game, and also with regards to its win ratio. And so the AMX M50, M454 has lost its crown to the Super Conqueror. However, considering it still has the second best win ratio of any of the tier 10 heavies, it's not a slouch by any means. And so I'd like to give a thumbs up to Wargaming for the way that they have nerfed this tank. They've clearly adjusted it to a point where it's not useless like they did with the Kranvang, but it's still competitive, but it's not clogging up the matchmaker and being a toxic presence. And so for as many times as I give Wargaming a really hard time, well done with what you did to the Amex M454 Wargaming. It's a fantastic change, and it looks like you've got the balance about right. And so ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about the nerfed form of the M454. Do you think it's trash or do you think that it's still doing pretty good? And if you're watching this video as it goes live on Monday, I'm going to be going live all day on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby and there will be brand new monthly drop tokens so you can get closer towards your tier 6 premium tank for free. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing you all live on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.